This video is on the objective use half angle formulas to find values of trigonometric functions. All right, this is the first video, number one, on a question from your homework uh, related to, uh, again, a question similar to the one you might see in your homework related to this objective. All right, so again, if you're unfamiliar with the objective, want to see more about it, please click on more instruction Look at their videos, their notes, their examples, and hopefully those help you as well. Um, so before I get into the question, I want to talk about these half-angle formulas and how to derive them. Right. So if you remember the double-angle formulas for cosine, you can get half-angle formulas. Because remember, if, 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 if an angle gets doubled, you know, then half that double angle would be the original angle again. Right? So the double angle formulas are kind of like your half angle formulas. And I'll show you what I mean. All right, so we're developing the half angle formulas. All right, so first for the sine. All right, now, to develop the half angle formula for sine, you have to recall one of the versions of the double angle formula for cosine. Remember the cosine of double an angle? One of the versions involved just sine. Uh, one of those versions was 1 minus 2 times sine squared theta. Right. So you see how this is kind of like a half angle formula? Right, this angle in here is double this angle. Well, that just means that this angle is half that angle. So another way I could write this another way I could write this is the cosine of some angle, you know, say I'll call it alpha just to make it something different. So 2 alpha, so I just replace 2 alpha, I'm sorry, I just replace 2 theta with alpha. All right, just replace 2 theta with alpha, meaning that theta is half of alpha, this theta over here. And that would mean the same thing, that, that the theta is half of alpha, All right. alpha over 2. So the cosine of an angle alpha would be equivalent to 1 minus 2 times the sine squared of half of that angle, of half of alpha, alpha over 2. So you see our double angle formulas are just like a half angle formula. Uh, and then I solve this for the sine. All right, so if I were to add the 2 sine squared and subtract cosine, we just kind of move this one step at a time. We'd have 2 sine squared of half alpha would be equal to 1 minus the cosine of alpha. And then I divide by 2. So we have sine squared of half alpha equals, you know, 1 minus cosine alpha. All of that divided by 2. And then I take the square root of both sides, and we get our half angle formula for you know the sine of half an angle. So the sine of say half of alpha, you know alpha over two, or theta over two, or a over two, or whatever angle over two, some angle cut in half, is equal to, now remember, when you have a square, when you're taking the square root of both sides of something, you're gonna, you're gonna get two possible solutions, one, a plus or minus square root. It's equal to plus or minus this square root of, you know, one minus the cosine of alpha all over two. All right, so it's, and you know, which one you use all depends on what quadrant this half angle is in. All right, so this here. All 
right, the plus or minus symbol, this depends on the quadrant that half of alpha, the half angle, is in. Alright, but I'll put this in a box though. Alright, this is our half angle formula for sine. Alright, so the sine of half an angle, half of alpha, is either positive or negative, you know, depending on what quadrant this half alpha is in, the square root of 1 minus the cosine of alpha, right, which is double this, right, whatever alpha over 2 is, you got double it in here. And then all that divided by 2, and this is all underneath the square root, right, there's a big square root. Alright, so there's the sine. Right, so I'll put this next to number one. Right, the, si the sine of half an angle. Now I'll do the same thing, something similar for the cosine of half an angle. Alright, so number two, our second half angle formula. So again, this comes from one of those versions of the cosine of a double angle. So remember the cosine of two of 2 theta, say. Remember the cosine of double an angle. Well, another version had just the cosine of theta in it. That was 2 times the cosine of theta squared and then minus 1. So again, same thing. If I look at this, this is also like, you know, instead of being a double angle formula, it's really kind of like a half angle formula. You know, whatever angles in here this is half of it. All right, this theta, this this angle over here on this side is half of that one. So if I replace two theta with say you know alpha, like I did earlier, if I replace two theta with alpha, or you know theta with alpha over two, I right, divide two by two on both sides, I get this formula: the cosine of you know some angle is equal to 2 times the cosine of half that angle squared minus 1. And then just like earlier, I, I'll leave the steps to you, but we just add 1 divided by 2, we'd have cosine squared of half alpha equals you know, 1 plus the cosine of alpha all divided by 2. And then I do square root of both sides and get our formula for the cosine of half an angle. All right, so square root of both sides here, I'll just write it here. So number 2, all right, so the cosine of half an angle is equal to, again, square roots, you're going to have you know, 1 plus or a plus or a minus. But again, this plus or minus will depend, you can't use both of them, will depend on what quadrant this half angle is in. And then the square root of, and then it's basically the same look as the sine of half an angle, but you have a plus instead of a minus in here. I mean, 1 plus the cosine of alpha, all divided by 2. Right? And that's all inside the square root. So, so the cosine of half an angle is either positive or negative, again, depending on what quadrant that half angle's in. The square root of 1 plus the cosine of, you know, twice that angle, double it will make it just alpha, and then divide it by 2, right? all inside the square root there. All right, so that's the cosine of half an angle. All right, then finally, now this is the tricky one, the tangent of half an angle. All right, the tangent of half an angle. Now remember, if you know the sine of an angle and the cosine of that same angle, all right, if you know the sine of an angle and the cosine of that same angle, you just divide those and you get the tangent of that angle. Right? So if I want the tangent, right, so this will be number three for our half angle formulas, if I want the tangent 
of, say, half of alpha. If I want the tangent of half an angle, that's equivalent to the, I'm going to use my formula for the sine of half an angle divided by the cosine of that half an angle, half alpha. All right, now I'm not going to write plus or minus twice. I'll just write it the one time out here, plus or minus. And then we have, you know, the sine of half an angle was, you know, the square root of one minus the cosine of alpha all over two. And then the cosine in the denominator was, you know, the square root of one plus the cosine of alpha all over two. And can you see if I just, you know, these square roots will go together, right? Square root over square root, they'll go together and the twos would just cancel. All right. So th this leads me to my third formula, right. three, the tangent of half an angle, right, the tangent of half of alpha is plus or minus, right, and again, 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 this, you can't, you're not using both. This w depends on what quadrant this angle is in, this half angle. Depends on the quadrant of that half angle that you're taking the tangent of. And then a big square root. And, you know, again, the twos will go away, basically. And you'll have one minus the cosine alpha in the numerator. And one plus the cosine alpha in the denominator. And, that, and this is all underneath this big square root. All right, so there's one version. Okay, one version of the tangent of half of half an angle. Now, I don't particularly like this one. There are two other versions that I do like better, and let me derive those for you now. All right, so let's stick with this one. Right, so we go back here, and I'll just I'll write this again. Right, we have the tangent of half alpha is now. I'm just going to ignore the plus or minus for now. Because uh, you're going to see in this in this version that I'm going to write the plus or minus won't be necessary. It'll be positive when it needs to be. It'll be negative when it needs to be. And you don't need to write a plus or a minus yourself. So I had one uh, one minus the cosine again from here. One minus the cosine of alpha in the numerator. One plus the cosine of alpha in the denominator. And to get a nice clean version with without a square root. We're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by conjugates. So I'm going to multiply this numerator in here by, let's say I multiply it by 1 minus cosine. I'll do 1 minus cosine alpha in the numerator and 1 minus cosine alpha in the denominator. Now what that does is it gives me this. I'd have the quantity 1 minus cosine alpha <clears throat> squared in the numerator. And then 1 plus cosine alpha times 1 minus cosine alpha, that'd be 1 minus cosine squared alpha, right? Remember, multiplying by conjugates, multiplying conjugates gives me a difference of squares. And I still have this quantity 1 minus cosine alpha squared in the numerator. But then 1 minus cosine squared, remember that's sine squared. And when you take the square root of both of these, this is just going to be 1 minus cosine alpha divided by sine alpha. All right, it gets rid of these squares. So this is another version. This is another version of the tangent of half alpha. The tangent of half an angle is, you know, again, just get rid of the squares here, 1 minus cosine alpha in the numerator divided by, all that divided by, and then just sine alpha in the denominator. And I'm telling you right now, there's no need for a plus or minus here because this expression will end up positive when it needs to be. It'll end up negative when it needs to be. So I personally like this more for the tangent of half an angle 
better than this one with the big square root. All right. uh, and then if I do something similar here, if I take this expression and multiply the top and bottom by 1 plus the cosine, all right, if I multiply the top and bottom by 1 plus cosine, then I'll have 1 minus cosine squared or sine squared in the numerator, and then sine times 1 plus cosine in the denominator, and one of the sines will cancel. So I'll leave that to you. Multiply the top and bottom by 1 plus cosine theta alpha, and you'd get this third version, which is also pretty clean and pretty nice, that the tangent of half of alpha is um, the sine of alpha in the numerator divided by 1 plus the cosine of alpha in the denominator. And, and again, I, I personally like these two better. I'd rather choose one of these for my tangent of half an angle, because again, there's no big square roots to worry about, and no plus or minuses to worry about. Uh, these formulas will end up positive when they need to be. They'll end up negative uh, when they need to be. All right. So again, lots of stuff there, lots of stuff. So one more time through, one more time through, just the formulas, not how to find them. All right, I already went over those. Um, so again, the sine of the sine of half an angle is plus or minus. Again, depending on what quadrant that half angle's in, the square root of, and then a big fraction in here, one, mi one minus the cosine of alpha, which is double this angle, divided by two. Then the cosine of half an angle is again plus or minus, depending on the quadrant that half angle's in. Square root of one plus the cosine of alpha. You know, double this, uh, then divided by two. And then your tangent. Again, I personally just like I use this middle one more often than anything. So you can look at the other two if you want, but I like using this one. The tangent of half an angle is, and then you got your numerator one minus the cosine of double that angle, right? Just alpha. All of that divided by the sine of that double angle, right? The sine of double the half angle to make it just alpha again. All right, this is a lot cleaner, a lot nicer looking to me uh, than this one. This one's okay too, but you know, I like I like having just the single term in the denominator there. All right. So now that I've got all these half angle formulas developed, let's take a look at the question. <laughs> all right. I know it's been like 17 minutes here. Um, so here, we're given, and, and this is kind of like the double angle formula section, part of this section, or part of the homework, um, or sum and difference formulas, you know, where you're given information about an angle, and then you're asked to change that angle and figure out the sine or cosine or tangent or whatever. So here we're given information about an angle called theta, right? Uh, it says if the sine of theta is 12 thirteenths, and theta is some angle that would end in quadrant two. Right? So I'm going to draw an angle in quadrant two in a second. If we're given this information about theta, what would be the sine of half of theta? Right? If you were to take this angle theta and cut it in half, give half its measure, what would be the sine of that new angle? And we can figure this out using the information we're given. All right, so let me do that. Let me draw a picture. Let me write out all the information I'm given here about this angle theta. All right, so we have this angle theta. We are told that the sine of theta is 12 thirteenths. We are also told that theta ends in quadrant two. So I will draw a picture of an angle that does this in standard position. Remember, so I'm starting from the positive x-axis. And I'm going to draw a nice one, right? Quadrant 2 is up here. Now you could draw a negative angle if you want. Cool, you can draw a positive. I'm going to draw a the, the smallest positive one I can just to make it easy on myself. So let's say this is theta here. I went counterclockwise, so it's a, a positive angle. That ends in quadrant 2. Now I'm also going to, now for the, I'll tell you right now, that you have to do something a little extra for these half angle formula stuffs. The angle I just drew, you know, since I'm having it be a small, the smallest positive angle I can that ends in quadrant two, that means this angle I just drew has a measure between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. 
right? Or you could say between pi over 2 radians and pi radians. Uh, so you can do degrees, radians, whatever. But I know this much about the angle I just drew, okay? It's between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Now, as I do with all these angles I draw in standard position, pick a point on the terminal side, right? This point here, say, uh, it has an x coordinate and a y coordinate that I want to try to find, and I draw a perpendicular segment to the x axis and create this right triangle, right, with this reference angle. And I want to set up this right triangle so that the sine of the reference angle is also 12 thirteenths. So remember, 12 thirteenths, so this will be opposite, this will be adjacent to the reference angle, right, not to theta, but to the reference angle. Oh, not adjacent, opposite over hypotenuse, I'm sorry. Right, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So in my drawing, the side opposite the reference angle I'll say has a length of 12 units. And again, I'm making that positive 12 because it's, you know, up from center. So this point up here on the, on the terminal side has a y coordinate of 12. And then the hypotenuse, the denominator, is 13. Right, and this is that r, right, that distance from the point on the terminal side to the origin. And that's always positive, right, r is always a positive number in these pictures. All I'm missing is the x. Now, I'm going to tell you right now this is you know, 5 units here, because 25 plus 144 is 169 using the Pythagorean theorem. Now you could use the Pythagorean theorem and solve for x or something. But... And I'm going to call this negative 5 because it's left of center. So that'll be the x-coordinate of this point up here that I have. All right, so now that I have all this, um, I have you know I have everything I need uh, to know about theta. Then we're going to look at a new angle, half of theta. All right, so this is a totally new angle. Right. Now. What we're asked to do is take this half theta and find the sine of half of theta. Now remember in the formula, for the sine of half an angle, I need to pick a plus or minus, meaning I need to know what quadrant half of theta is in. Well, based on my drawing here, right, we saw that the theta I drew, this angle that ends in quadrant 2, is between you know, 90 and 180 degrees. Cut this in half. All right, that's what we're doing to the angle. Cut in half. And what does that give us? If I multiply this whole thing, this inequality, by a half, that means half of theta would be between... Right, half of theta would be between 45 degrees and 90 degrees. So what quadrant is that? If you have an angle that measures between 45 degrees and 90 degrees, that means half of theta, whatever it is, I don't know what it measures, but it's in quadrant 1, isn't it? Half of theta would be in quadrant 1. So I'm going to keep that in mind when I use the formula now. Alright, All right, so now our formula for the sine, you know, we're asked to find the sine of half theta. So remember, the first thing I need to do is choose a plus or a minus. Well, we saw here, half of theta is in quadrant 1. The sine of any angle in quadrant 1 is going to be positive. All right. And again, that's because theta over 2, half of theta, is in quadrant 1. It's got to be. If I, again, if I'm using this smallest positive angle, right, this angle between 90 and 180. Uh, I mean, if you went the other way, if you went, that's why, again, I'm using the smallest positive angle that ends there. If you went the other way, if you went a negative angle, you know, between uh, negative 180 and negative 270, then half would be between negative 90 and negative 135, and you'd be in quadrant 3. So, again, based on my picture half of theta is in quadrant 1, so that's why I'm using the, the plus. Right. 
Okay. And then the square root, finish the formula here, of, and then inside this square root is a fraction, 1 minus the cosine of, you know, double this, which would be just theta, and then all that divided by 2. So you see what I need here is cosine of theta. Now we know sine of theta, right, looking back at my picture, we know the sine of theta. We need to find the cosine of theta. And that's easy enough, right, that would be negative 5 thirteenths. You can do adjacent over hypotenuse in your triangle or x coordinate over r. And that's what I'm going to plug in to my, my formula. So the sine of half this angle that I drew in the first picture would be positive square root of 1 minus, and then the cosine of theta we just said was negative 5 thirteenths. And then all of that divided by 2. And we definitely need to simplify this expression. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, just multiply the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 13. And that'll be distributed. Let's see, distribute to that, distribute to that, because there's two terms in the numerator. So what I have now is the square root of 13 and then plus 5, all right, because the 13s would cancel there and you have minus negative 5, divided by 26. So I have the square root of 18 26 which, I mean, that definitely simplifies to not 9 thirteenths, right? The square root of 9 thirteenths. And if you want to rationalize, you, know, you multiply the top and bottom here by 13. Uh, this would be the square root of, you know, 9 times 13. It would be 90 plus 27. That would be 117. All over, and then the square root of 169 would be 13. Right, so if you if you can I'm sure you can just leave it like this as the square root of nine thirteenths, but I'm going to put it in the rationalized version. All right, so way back here on the website, putting in the square root of 117. All right, that was the nine times thirteen, and then all of that uh, divided by. And then make sure the 13 in the denominator is not under the square root, right? Because I rationalized the denominator. Correct, you nailed it, Ray. Right? All right. All right. And I guess the square root of nine is three. Uh, <laughs> so I could have just made that three root 13 over 13. Whatever. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, okay. And again, they did the same thing where they're like, hey, theta over 2 is in quadrant 1. Again, because we're talking positive angles here, right? Um, use, use the, make this easy on yourself. Use the smallest positive angle that will satisfy the conditions given, and that'll make this a lot easier. Okay, wonderful. All right, so that was a lot. Right? I know it was a lot. This is almost half an hour, right? Because I went through and developed all those half-angle formulas with you, or for you. Just got to know which one to use. And again, pay it. you have to really pay attention for these. You know, you have to know what, what quadrant will half the angle be in. So you know which to use. Do you use the positive square root or negative square root? Okay, so hopefully watching me do this one... Uh, looking at the more instruction, all that stuff will help you when you work on this thing, this kind of stuff on your own. And thank you for watching.